folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, just had a quick video. A friend of mine had asked me to uh, make some riser blocks for a wood lathe that he had. He wanted to be able to increase the diameter of the material he could spin on the lathe. And I didn't really intend to make a video of this, so I don't have much video footage. And But I do have a little and some, uh, some steel shots. The first part was to cut up some big chunks I had, which kind of maxed out the... Uh, little Kalamazoo bandsaw. I uh, tried to do it with what I had. After I'd cut out the blocks, I went ahead and squared them up on the mill. Uh, this is where the horizontal mill is kind of nice. Running at one and three quarter inch per minute. And the uh, RPM is 412 is the spindle speed. That's a, about a three and a half inch face mill. Or shell mill, I guess it would show them taking a pretty good cut my idea was to weld make a weldman weld up these blocks into a base that we could set the headstock and the tailstock with the wood laid on as you can see it's taking a pretty good chip there So here's the blocks welded up. I welded them up with a 6013 um, arc weld. I get, grooved out the uh, joints pretty good. And after I got them, after I got the uh, blocks welded together, I mounted a, the two of them together on the uh, bed of the mill. So I wanted to make sure they were exactly the same height. And then went ahead and cut them down to the, so they were the same height. Of, because you can see the smaller tailstock riser block is a little bit lower than the one for the headstock, so I had to shave, the, shave them both down to the same height. I've had several com people comment about using the uh, outboard, the overarm support so far outboard, and unfortunately at this point I only have the Type A, which is what Curtin Trekker calls this overarm support. Uh, I only have a Type A. The Type B is the one that uh, runs on the bushing and can run up closer to the cutter. Um, haven't had any luck finding one of those, so uh, fortunately this old Tony put out a video on uh, making the overarm support he uses for his mill. So um, I've got some material gathered up that I think I can weld together to to make myself a, a B support. It'll be an interesting project, but. If you haven't watched this old Tony, you should definitely check out his channel. And also, since this, since I recorded this video, I've got the um, flood coolant lubricant system working on this uh, mill. It took a little bit of fiddling to get the, the pump. It sat for so long it was gummed up. The pump actually sits down at the very bottom, and the, you know, there's a big sump. Everything feeds back into it had gummed up, so got that uh, cleaned out and working now, but didn't have working when I filmed this. So I went ahead and, as you can see, I left the, um, in the center, there's a little tongue that registers the headstock and the tailstock to the bed of the wood lathe. There's a tongue on one side and a groove on the other. I couldn't really figure out how to register the groove, I, I was thinking of cutting the groove first, couldn't figure out how to register it, so I ended up cutting the tongue first and then using parallels to mount it on, to square it up to make sure that the groove is was in line with the uh, tongue, make sure everything was squared up when, when it was all mounted back up. It took a little fiddling, but it uh, looks like it came out pretty good. Uh, this big wheel cutter. Looks like it's going pretty fast, but it's not going as fast as it looks for some reason in the video. Again, it's still feeding at one and three quarters inches per minute. And I've got the spindle RPM down to, uh, you can see it there, maybe, maybe not. 73, I believe, was the spindle RPM. As you can see, one of the really nice things about the horizontal mill is the ability to mount everything up and you know, get get the surface down in one plane as well as making the grooves and the other 
items that need to be uh, milled in all in one plane in one setup without having to move things around. So after I got uh, the tongue and the grooves milled, as you can see, they, the surface finish turned out pretty nice. Those wheel cutters, even though it's kind of a cobbled together arbor, seem to work. And after I got those, then I mounted the, and I clamped the uh, blocks to the table and used a uh, indexable face mill. I believe it's a four or five inch face mill with the triangular inserts to go ahead and clean up the sides and fronts. On the front side, on the ends of each, you can see to the, on the left side of the block there, there's a little bit where I'd weld it on. Now it's on the right side. Where I'd weld it on a tab so I could mount that to the table so I could ground those off and then refinish. Then I had to drill four holes in the headstock block for the mounting bolts that bolt it down to the bed. Here you can see the blocks with the uh, lathe parts sitting on them. Went up with a real nice fit. Just kind of worked my way into it. Got a real nice fit. And here's the uh, riser blocks mounted in the lathe. Took them over to my friend's house. We mounted them up in his lathe. And, and uh, I wanted to paint them, but he kind of liked the raw look of them, so we left them raw. But uh, as you can see here, it really increased the uh, diameter. He added a little over six inches to the diameter of the uh, material he can spin on the, on the lathe now. He had to get a longer belt uh, under the under the head stuck. There's a motor down in the cabinet underneath with a belt, so he bought a longer flat belt to uh, run the spindle. But it seems to be working out. He seems to enjoy it, making some nice big bowls. But that was just a short video showing one little project worked on. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.